Today, I'm going to walk through how to connect an analog mass flow controller to LabVIEW. The goal is to get the device connected and communicating with LabVIEW in under 30 minutes. The program will allow us to send a set point and monitor flow response. In order to get started with the LabVIEW program, you first need to be able to connect the device to the computer. Listed here are the minimum requirements needed in order to do this. For this demo, I'll be working with an analog device which provides the analog signals through the 15-pin connector on the top of the device. In order to connect it to both a power supply and the National Instruments Data Acquisition card, I had to make a custom breakout cable to connect the power supply and DAC simultaneously. You also need to make sure that the DAC you have allows for both analog inputs and outputs. I'm using the NI USB 6009, but their new version of this is the USB 6002. With the device now connected, I will be able to start the program. In order to get data to and from the device, I use the DAC Assistant, which is located in Measurement I.O., NI DAC, and then DAC Assistant. You will have to set up two DAC Assistants, one for acquiring a signal and one for generating a signal. Generating the signal will be used for sending a set point to the SLA. You will click on Analog Input, then Voltage, since this SLA is set up for 0 to 5 volts. I have my DAC wired to the AO0, Analog Output Channel 0, terminal, so I'm going to select that. For terminal configuration, I have it set up for a reference single-ended signal. I also want the signal output range to be from 0 to 5 volts, since this is how I'm going to send the set point. Once that is configured, I need a way to send the set point, so I will go to the front panel of the VI and make a numeric control. But since I would want to send a set point as a percentage of full scale rather than a voltage value, I will have to multiply the signal by 0 0.05 before it gets sent to the device. Now we will want to be able to read signals from the device to see how much gas we are flowing. We will do that with the NI DAC, but this time we will acquire signals. You will click on Analog Input, then Voltage. I have my DAC wired to the AI0, or Analog Input Channel 0, terminal, so I'm going to select that. For terminal configuration, I have it set up for a differential signal, but you could have it set up for a reference single ended as well. At this point, you can get pretty flexible with what you want to have the program read back to you from the device. What will spit back at us will be the voltage signal coming from the device. This can then be converted into percent of full scale or even the flow in cubic centimeters per minute. I want to put all of those indicators on the front panel. I also want to put a control to enter the full scale flow rate of the device. This will allow for us to display the flow output. If you want, you could also put a graph on your front panel to monitor the device performance over time. So now we're going to have to wire everything in such a way that all of the outputs are accurately represented. Voltage is easy. It's just wired straight to the DAC assistant since that's the raw signal coming back from the device. Percent full scale is next, which is just the raw signal multiplied by 20. I would also like my graph to display the percent of full scale, so I'll wire that here as well. In order to get the flow out in cubic centimeters per minute, we'll need to multiply what we put into the percent full scale output by 0.01 and then by the device full scale in cubic centimeters per minute.
Those are all of the inputs and outputs that I want for this program, but now I want to modify how the program is run. I'd like for it to run continuously until I tell it to stop, and then when I hit stop, I'd like for the program to send a zero set point to the device so it will stop flowing. To do this, I'll want to put a while loop around what I have so far. On the front panel, I'll also add a stop button and then wire it to the loop condition icon. To have the set point be set to zero when I hit the stop button, I'll want to make another DAC assistant for generating a signal. I'll also want to make a local variable for the set point. Those will be outside of the loop. On the inside of the loop, I will have a zero integer and wire it to both the DAC assistant as well as the set point local variable. Now the program will be ready to use. If I hit run, it will run continuously until I hit stop. When I turn on the air pump that I have connected to the device and then give the device a set point, it will start to flow and will also read out on the graph. I can now make any aesthetic changes necessary, such as changing the graph scaling and organizing the front panel to make it more professional looking. Here you can see that when I send a set point, I get a response on the graph of the flow in percent of full scale. And as I change the set point, the graph changes accordingly. So here's an example of the same program, but in a much more polished format. Now that we're done with the program, I'd like to touch on one more detail about Brooks devices in LabVIEW. We have a lot of DLL software that can help you set up communication with a variety of our digital devices. The DLLs can be used within whatever program you write and are available on our website for you to download. <laughs>